Also, I think the Rel is fantastic for Kwangdong's comp with the setup they have, so... Guess what's really good, good into it. Yeah, Alistair, which is what Andil played in game one, got my POG vote. Uh, and it's been one of his better picks this season. We'll have to wait and see as we are ready to hop on the rift for game number two. Yep. It was in boost on, right? And yep. we haven't seen them really get back to that greatness for a long time. And I think the hope is and always has been for Kwangdong Freak fans, Freaks fans for the last year and a half that these players who, who came up, Bulldog, for example, pretty huge edge here, not even using his barrier. And Zeri's on a six game winning streak. I'm looking at the way the draft function as a 5v5 team, like we talked about that a lot there, but in terms of the early game as well, I think Kong will have a lot of advantages here. You think about the 280 carries and also, oh, here we go. This is what you were talking about. He gets tower aggro and he is going to have to flash away. He is okay. I can't believe this keeps happening. <laughs> yeah, the issue is that Cuz is here as well, and there is a ward as well, but he's not going to respect the push once again. Dudu going to drop down the equalizer and try to run to Diego, and there's the impale. It's just a kill. First blood going over to Sylvie. Cuz gets in, but not going to overstay his welcome here. So, And that type of scenario. So heads up play from Sylvie coming over there. Knowing the rumble doesn't have flash, nor does Dundin, but they can work together to lock him down, jump on in there. And now Cuz, who has been kind of the objective meister here in this one, he is going to take down the Grubs and now the first streak much earlier in this game compared to the 12 minutes of last game. Yeah, much, much faster. Same Infernal that they are going to pick up here. So very relevant stats. As Bulldog's going to come over here, see Sylvie. Cuz rotates over, looks like nothing's going to happen of it. But I want to point out that even with the call by here for Leaper, Sticking it to the haters, I think, in a lot of ways, because their week one was was pretty rough, but I think they've fixed a lot of their issues. Like, Gugger looked a lot better in game two, although he did have his cricket moments. Um, yeah. Fisher's laning has looked better since Nongshim's uh, first series. Uh oh Here's the all-in. The all-in comes in, and Jiu just going to ult on top of him as well. The barrier has to be used here from Leaper and from Jiu. The flash Q comes in, and Leaper cannot handle the pressure from Jiu. He had barrier but it wasn't enough to save him. Up a level here. He has Shiv too. And yeah, the Shiv is, is quite a significant spike here. He's able to proc it, comes Tiger in, there. has his own barrier too to trade with Leapers. And as a Plasma stacks up, the Q is enough. And you can see the fadeaway walk back. He knows as soon as he presses Q and that connects, he's got the kill. And Mihail in the booth is, oh. here we go again. Here we go again. This time the knock on the wall into the Impale. Dudu just has to flash to get out of this one. He needs some rock damage. And they're just going to trade flashes again. Okay, Cuz is here though, so if Dudu baits him. Yeah, Equalizer's going to come down. He's just trying to push the wave as fast as he possibly can. Dudu must be sitting on a lot of gold right now. He still only has Swifties. So he's not doing much. Cuz already uh, is <laughs> sitting on a full item, and he will be able to help in getting the kill. Very nice dive. Nicely set up there from Dudu and Dundun, I would say. Trying to set up for this dragon here, but a little slow. Now, uh, uh, Gugger's gonna also just get over the wall. That will go over to Cuz once again, gets the smite down. Gugger with the Magnus Storm. He's eating a lot of damage, but that's a punch into the Rel. It might not matter as Cuz is gonna go down, and now Sylvie wreaking havoc on this back line. Dudu in a bit of trouble, but Bulldog is really the guy on top who has the most health, potentially the most damage, but Sylvie is gonna get in on that one, and he's not gonna be able to do quite enough. Does go down to Andil and Bulldog, and now Dindin's all alone. Gets the impale, but it's not going to matter. That doesn't really matter if Leaper's not the guy this time around. They've got Bulldog, who's 2-0-1. They've got the Rumble, who has three kills, and is going to throw an ult into that wave as in comes Gugger. but Andil is just so fantastic to uh, buy some space and time here for his top laner and uh, will keep him alive. There's no wave here either, so they can't even get the turret off of this play. I do think this is exactly how you have to play this craft out, though, with a fed Kaisa, and that being your real key win uh, condition here as Nongshim, is to try to dive and set up single target plays on squishies like the Rumble. You have so much setup. You have the Magnet Storm as Ando might be caught. Yeah, he doesn't have his ult, but he does have Flash, so might, if he gets in trouble, elect to use that, but just is able to walk it off. Zeri and uh, Diego there as well. To it's uh, the Doos that are winning over the Duns in this one. 
as, I mean, that's that's quite common for a Rumble, but he shouldn't have that big of a lead. Yeah. Okay, flash on in. Bulldog might be in some trouble. He's got the Kaisa nearby to help take him down. As the ult comes in and he gets another jump. Bulldog, how do you manage to get out of that? As the W might be coming in and Skarner's on the chase as well. One rock not going to be in range, and Bulldog walks it off like it's nothing. Flash used by Dindin on the play as well. Finds nothing. Bulldog doesn't even have Flash. He still gets out with the ult. And now Cuz looking for more. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, he's going to get the turret, and he's got some support here as well. Fisher, and now a TP coming in. Avil gets into that backline. Fisher is just so dead as he had already flashed here. And now we get another charge with this Rift Herald. Yeah, bro. Oh. Smite it away. Really? And Avil is underneath the turret, so he's going to have to use that flash. They're still maybe going to get this turret, which is insane this early on. And yeah, they will. Elite for sticks around and takes down the mid inner. So, so much money on that play, and it's just off of Cuz saying, I'm driving in. I, I do think the most confusing part of the draft, which I'm not going to get to talk about here, uh, Bulldog is in a lot of trouble. Can he get out of this one is really the question. As uh, I don't think so. <laughs> He is a magician and he nearly kills Dindin, but he is not going to get out this time around as now the rest of the team is able to get in. He did a lot of damage, at least Bulldog, and now the rest of the team is here to punish as they take down the Skarner, they take down Googer, and they're not done yet. They have tons of mobility. Zeri would love to continue, but with the Sun Turret, they're just going to back off of this one and maybe look for the Baron. Meanwhile, this bottom inner is also going to go down. Tooth, that's very common to look for Poke, because Poke isn't going to bring you back into this one. You've got a hard carry duo. They're going in onto a Zoom Down. Not the most common target, but he is a bit isolated, and the Viejo loves to play into that. And Will Heartbreaker, but it's not quite enough to take down Sylvie. Sylvie does get chunked out in a big way, though. I mean, that's the jungler, remember, and we got a dragon come up in 30 seconds. Uncontested, uh, like so much minion, so much farm lost there. Will finally be picked up by Dindin, but Bulldog's just gonna come over and take the dragon solo while they contest Baron. Yeah, guess you might as well. Nongshu might have read into that. They're trying to find some kind of a gauge, but you're you're a uh, Arel looking at a Fed Rumble and an Alistair right there. You don't want to engage onto that. And now it's just going to be Cloud Soul over to the Kwong Gong Freaks, just like that. Just Andil. with the posturing that's coming in. And Andil will find Xin Zhao. It, it's not he alone can't do it. His team has to set him up for success. This is always the way it is, though. It's always you. Look at that fast cow just sprinting at the Xin Zhao. As they're pretty deep in here now with the TP coming in. They're trying to engage on the Leaper, but he's actually so tanky. Just able to get away, throws an ult on the Dindin. He's absolutely dead. Andil buying a lot of time. Meanwhile, Dudu is going ham in the back line, just roasting everybody to a crisp as Sylvie as well should eventually go down here too. He's left all alone. No way to do it all by himself. And Guangdong Freaks, just like that, pick up a clean ace. And Nongshim mostly grouped up. Fisher was just pushing out top lane, but he's going to have to come here as they make their final stand. He has a teleport ward he could try to go to to look for an Emperor's Divide angle, but he's just going straight to the turret. And that was like one angle they could have tried to go for, but it's so the teleport ward's so far away, it would have just been collapsed on. Uh -oh. Here's the ult. Yeah, Dendon just uh, kept in place, and he brings the cow into the back line. Oh, no! As, uh, yeah, Dudu's just going to press his Q button and roast everybody once again. And Leaper as well going to assassinate the rest of the team. Dendon desperate to get out, and Leaper nearly dies, but he's got a shield bow and he will survive as that will be the end of game number two. It is a 2-0 for Kwang Nong Freaks tonight over Nong Chin. Uh This is a more depressing end, I would say, as double the damage here newly for Dudu, who has top damage in the game on the Rumble.